Hi, I'm Dr. William Polanski. I'm a clinical psychologist and a certified diabetes educator. I'm a professor at the University of California at San Diego. Um, I run a small nonprofit called the Behavioral Diabetes Institute. Um, I'm here on behalf of IDOC to talk about patients who are struggling with their diabetes and how primary care physicians can help those patients do a better job. Um, we know that there's an enormous number of our patients who, despite our best efforts, are having a tough time managing one or more of the many difficult self-care behaviors that good diabetes care requires. So whether we're talking about following recommendations for taking medications, regular activity, following a diabetes-friendly way of eating, um, uh, blood glucose monitoring, regular foot care, you know the list. There's all sorts of our patients, so many of them unfortunately, who really have a tough time following our recommendations and therefore end up in poor metabolic control. So when we think about what can we do to help those folks, one of the things I, I wanted to mention is that certainly most of us, almost all healthcare professionals, are experts at what doesn't work. We know that just telling people to go find some willpower and get back to me when you find it isn't very effective. We know that trying to scare people isn't very useful. Um, we know that just giving people endless amounts of advice doesn't seem to be helpful either. So it's unfortunate that we're such experts at what doesn't work. So when we think about what to do about it, I think the most important thing to recognize is to remember that nobody, not a single one of your patients, is unmotivated to want to live a long and healthy life. You're not unmotivated to do so, I'm not, and neither are our patients. That's not the problem. The problem is, as you know, just as the same for you and me, things get in the way. Obstacles arise that make it more difficult, that make it uh, um, impossible to uh, follow some of the things that you know might be useful for you, whether that means exercise or the other things that we listed previously. So how do we deal with those obstacles? Well, there's a host of things that we all can do as healthcare prof professionals. And even if you have very, very limited time with your pa patients, we know there's a couple things that you can do. So to mention one, I want to talk about metabolic data. I mean, we know that most of our patients, hopefully if we're doing a good job, are regularly getting A1C tests, having their blood pressure checked, lipids, microalbumin, and more. Now we also know that diabetes, especially we're talking about type 2 diabetes, is typically a, well, a relatively invisible disease. Um, high blood sugars don't hurt. High blood pressure doesn't hurt. It's easy not to notice if your numbers are out of range. So what we want to consider is how on earth can you make an invisible disease more visible? Because if we can help to make this disease more visible, and I don't mean scarier, I mean more real, more visible for folks, we've taken the first step towards helping them to begin to see that taking action to manage their diabetes more effectively right now might be valuable. So metabolic data, for example, how do we share A1C data with our patients? Number one, do we get these tests done regularly for our patients? And do we actually communicate this to our patients? Or do we just send them lab sheets in the mail? Do we sit down with our patients? Do we show them their numbers? Do we help them to understand what these numbers mean for them and what, if anything, they need to do about it? It's too easy to tell patients, uh, your numbers are fine, I'll let you know if there's a problem. But to really let them know where your numbers are now, where they've been, hopefully where they're going, and why that's so important can really make all the difference in the world. Now, I should mention, to give someone a lecture about glycosylated hemoglobins or blood pressure values or lipid values, let's face it, that's boring. But what's hopefully not so boring is when you're talking to someone about their numbers, their A1C value, their last blood pressure reading, etc. So helping people to understand what their numbers are in a non-blaming, non-judgmental way to simply help them to identify whether these numbers mean at this moment, you're in a safe place with your diabetes or an unsafe place, to get feedback from them about what they think about that, and then with them in a, in a collaborative way to think about what you can do for the future and how you can help them move from an unsafe place to a safe place. Now granted, I understand as a primary care physician you may have very limited time and there's no getting around the fact that this can take time. 
time that you may not feel is possible. But if you're seeing a patient on a regular basis and feel like you're getting nowhere, you're already wasting a lot of time. So it might be worthful, worthwhile for you and or some of the folks you work, work with, if you work with a nurse educator, a dietitian, even a receptionist can be involved in this, help to, to really emphasize the importance of helping your patients to know their numbers and what they mean and finally what they can do about it. We do have some data showing this can be useful, especially when it's part of a conversation with patients. So I hope you'll consider at least trying that with the next one, two, three patients you see who you're having a tough time with and discover for yourself whether that might be a useful approach to take. And so this is Bill Polonsky, and once again on behalf of iDoc, thanks again for tuning in.